Let's talk about study design, right? We're talking about epidemiology. This is the third video in a series that I'm doing. Uh, my name is Greg Martin. You can get the slide that you're looking at at the moment from learnmore365.com. I'll put a link at the end of the video. Let's jump right in. There's two big buckets that we really think about observational and experimental. What do I mean by that? Observational studies is we're really just looking at the world as it is and we're trying to understand something about it. Experimental studies is we do something, we do an experiment, we intervene and we see what was the impact of that intervention, right? Okay, observational studies, there's two types once again, descriptive and analytic, right? Descriptive studies are really just us taking a step back and looking at the world as it is and saying, what do we see? And this relates back to what we've been talking about in this series, epidemiology. A big part of epidemiology is understanding the distribution in terms of time, place, and person of exposures and outcomes. And these descriptive studies can often give us that picture. So even before we start trying to understand the causative relationship between exposures and outcomes, let's get ourselves into reality. What does the world look like? A descriptive study can take us there could be a case report, a single case will tell us something, a series of cases tells us a bit more. And then a cross-sectional survey, a cross-sectional study takes at a point in time, a snapshot of society and we collect information about either exposures, outcomes or both. We can do serial cross-sectional studies at different points in time, at which point we now start eking towards an analysis. And let's move on to analytical studies now. If you do any kind of research, I am about to blow your mind. Watch this. I've come to consensus and I've put in my research question. And what I wanna know is what is in the literature. Now consensus is an AI search engine for research. I've asked the question, does social media negatively impact mental health? Let's see what Consensus says. Consensus not only gives you a snapshot synopsis of what the research says, but it also allows you to look under the hood at the strength of the research that is informing the answer to that question. So if we look at our consensus meter, we can expand it out and look at not just the numbers, but the quality of the papers that contribute to the answers that are given. It also provides you with a narrative or a little literature review on the subject, and you can click on any of the references and it'll take you down to information about that paper. And once you're at the paper, you can click here, ask for more information about the methods, outcomes, results, etc., etc., the type of study that was done, the rigor of the journal that it was published in, the number of citations, and more. And here is one of my favorite features of consensus, where the paper is available, and if it's not, you can upload it. There is a ask this paper function. And yeah, you can read the paper, but of course you can ask questions and consensus will provide an answer like, were there any conflicts of interest? Summarize the paper for me. Does the paper take age into account? And you can type in any additional questions you want right there and an answer will appear on the screen. Unbelievable. So take a look at consensus today. I'll put a link in the description below. You will absolutely love it. Breaking news, you can get one year of free consensus premium if you use the offer code GREG100 and it's capital G-R-E-G 100, one year for free. That's amazing. Do it now, consensus.app. Analytical studies are really, again, they're observational. So we're just looking at the world as it is, but we are trying to understand something about the relationship between exposures and outcomes. And we're gonna have a little, we're gonna actually look at a lot more detail in the next few videos where we look at case control studies, cohort studies, and RCTs. But these analytical studies are trying to tell us about the relationship between exposures and outcomes. At this stage, in these observational studies, we can't draw conclusions. We can't, off the back of an observational studies, we wouldn't say we know categorically that there's this causative relationship. But it does give us, they can give us some evidence and then prompt uh, additional studies, et cetera, et cetera. Now, let's move on to experimental studies. Here's where we get strong evidence. And it's because we actually intervene. We do something. We either give people a drug or remove a hazard and exposure, a risk, and we see what happens. If it's a randomized controlled trial, people are put into two groups randomly and either exposed or not exposed to the intervention or whatever it is that we're doing, and then we see what happens. Now, uh, and we're gonna ha I'm gonna do a whole video on that in just a minute. If they aren't randomly assigned less strong evidence because we've got a, the problem of confounding. Uh, in my previous video and in future videos, I'll re-describe what we mean by confounding. Really, it's an alternative explanation where the exposure and the outcome are both associated with a third explanation. I'm not gonna get into that right now. The next video is gonna be case control studies and cohort studies, so let's jump into that. Um, I hope you found this useful. Click on the link on the screen at the moment. Just go to the place to, at learnmore365 to download this. Don't do drugs, always do your best. Boom shakalaka, speak to you soon, take care, bye.